What's going on, y'all? Spooder TTV, and we are back with another episode. And this is going to be one of them good ones because we really got an Atlanta legend with us right now. Everyone, let everyone know your name, your social media, where they can find you. Scotty ATL, Grills by Scotty. You can find me um, at 1900 Candler Road. Hey. Hey. And you can find me at 7811 Melrose Avenue. Hey. Scotty ATL on social media and Grills by Scotty. Okay. Yeah. That's crazy that you said that because I'm thinking Melrose, when you talk about the project, because I already know, okay, Candler Road, East Side. I'm from the East Side, too. I grew up in Ellenwood. Okay. What high school you went to? Redan. Redan. Oh, okay. Yeah. So did you, like, grow up in, like, Stone Mountain-ish area, or you was, like, the further end of Candler Road? Nah, I actually um, grew up on Marby Road in Cherokee okay. Valley. Okay. That's in La Thonia. Yeah, I know where that's at. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's where I grew up at. But I played basketball um, with a group of guys. We play AAU ball. AAU um, ball. That is yeah. some DeKalb County stuff. Yeah, yeah. We play, like, you know, a lot of sports together. So they all went to Redan. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up using one of my homeboys' address. Mm. His, his dad let me use the address so I can go to the school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Melrose is L.A., though, right? Like that's Melrose is in L.A. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. Well, that's Melrose is where my, I have two stores now. Okay. One in Atlanta and Decatur. And one in uh, L.A. on Melrose, West Hollywood. Mm, ooh, you got one on the east side. Yeah. Okay, that's that's got to be a true staple for real on the east side. To be from the east side and to have a business over there? Facts, though. That's it means a lot to me, you know what I'm saying? Coming from the east side, it's like a dream to be able to have a business over there. And um, it's doing well, you know what I'm saying? People support it. We give back in the community, you know. It's, it's dope. I love it. I saw you had, like, sponsored a football team. Yeah, we sponsored the football team. That was in L.A. We sponsored um, Fairfax okay. High School football team. Um, had a chance to talk to some of the players, highlight the coaches, and um, we locked in. So we're going to do some, some more stuff with them this year. Uh, I like it. We right across the street from Fairfax High. So, like, on Melrose, the corner, this is Fairfax right here, Melrose, okay. we, like, right on the corner of it. Mm. Yeah, so Fairfax High, right across the street from Grills by Scotty. I know them boys probably coming over there getting grills too with they with they little allowance. Yeah, you know, the it's McDonald's like the money. The time, you know, they mm -hmm. come through. Um, you know, they my, my pop said for a minute was like at the shop too, so they know who on there pop up, you know what I'm saying? I speak to him, you know. But um uh, it's dope just being in the area in general, you know. We in the process of right now of getting a, a like a upgraded location too. Mm. So we're gonna be in West Hollywood, but we're gonna be on Fairface. Okay. So yeah. what's gonna be special about like the upgraded location? Um, VIP, you know what I'm saying? Exclusivity, um, you know, a lot of special packages, you know what I'm saying? You know, you just, can pull up, get a blunt or get some wine. Uh, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know about all that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know. You know, but it's LA, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? People do their own thing, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. Okay. I do got a little, got a little icebreaker for okay. you because I listened to the project and I got a couple lines that I want to break down. Mm -hmm. So I know you said it was a line that you said in one of your songs. You were saying rap doesn't give benefits in a pension. Mm. So like what made you, what made you say that in a verse? I, feel, I don't feel like I've ever heard a rapper really touch on that. And it's crazy because as we've seen a lot of unfortunate events recently in the past years, people getting shot, things right, happening right, right. and nightlife isn't necessarily the safest. Mm. Well, actually, that was I Young Sue mm -hmm. on the hook. He right. said that. I think it was like him going into your yeah, verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was him. That's my boy. I just spoke to him earlier today. Mm -hmm. We working on some stuff. But, you know, it's dope because at Grills by Scotty, we have mm -hmm. benefits, actually. Oh. Yeah, we have benefits. What? You know what I'm saying? For your so, employees? Yeah, yeah. They got life insurance, dental, uh, health and vision. What? Yeah, straight up. So it kind of dope, you know what I'm saying? Because... I felt like that even as a rapper, as an artist, you know, you don't get no benefits. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I want to create something for my own people, you know. Dope. Well, and that's a legit business. It's not just, oh, paying somebody a retainer yeah. to come do woo de woo <clears throat> but you actually send people straight so, like, they can take care of their families and themselves. No doubt. What? That's what's up. Okay, so it's another line. Let me say it, and I quote. If I, if I say it wrong, you can correct okay, me. Okay, all right. So you said, elevated, I stacked up. This was on um, Test Drive with Bentley, and that was like your intro okay, song. Yeah. So, elevated, I stacked up while niggas round me blow. I ain't never been no jealous nigga. I ain't never been no hoe. 
Wow. Oh, real talk. Cursing, but what? Yeah, break it down. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I just feel like you know, as you come up in the game, you know, you you just encounter a lot of jealousy. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's it just becomes more more like clear to you, you know, and people you encounter day to day. You know, I was just talking to my cousin about it the other day and talking about like. In a sense, too, you 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 have to sometimes check yourself because you're looking for it so much, you know, because people will try to take advantage of you. So, you know, I ain't never been no jealous nigga. I ain't never been no hoe. You know, I, I always stay on my ground. I always stay about my business. I always stay solid. Okay. And then you had a song. Was it the song with Young Dro? It was funny because it was like, basically you said along the lines of, if Basically, they had to help you get your hoes back or something like that. If you if you fuck with them, some 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 something something along those lines. So yeah. break that down for me. Why is it a girl's responsibility to get your hoes back when it's like, all right, you you made that choice to put your jersey up? So well, you know, it's it's like saying, basically, this is this is me dramatically saying, listen, I'm all in with you. But if this shit don't work out, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't I didn't lost a lot fucking with you. You know what I'm saying? So, like, out of courtesy, you know what I'm saying? Man, get on my nerves. Yeah, you need to help me get these hoes back. You know what I'm talking about? For real. Man, get on my nerves so much, <laughs> yeah. I swear. But I got from, like, this project, though, listening, I got, like, rap is just something, like, you just be doing for fun. Like, you don't even, like, you, you really did a lot in music. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So, to some people, you may have, you know, done all the things that you want to do with music. So it's like, right. all right, well, rap is just like, all right, something you do for fun. Right. Well, you know what's crazy, though? This is, like, the biggest I've ever been in music. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, like, some of my some of my projects streaming more than ever. I, I guess it's just, you know, people that buy grills also now becoming fans. Mm. Or just, you know, people more aware just because I'm just in the scene, you know, in general. But, um... The music is doing more. It's just that the grills just go so crazy that sometimes it's like, oh, okay, you do music too, you know. So some people get introduced, and it's like, oh, you do music too. And then some people are already up on the music, and, you know, they see the grills and like, oh, that's dope, bro, that you doing something different. So, it, you know, the two worlds collide, and, you know, it go back and forth. But the music actually been going up more. Okay. Yeah. I feel like you understand branding too, especially when it comes to like your grills cause like your partnerships. I know you had the collab recently with Puma and you've done a lot of collabs in the city, but I just remember even when you used to have events, it was a whole thing. Like we paid a certain type of respect to you. So it's like, how did you, I would say, how did you get people to support you in a certain type of way? And what did you understand about branding from music that was adjacent to running your business? I feel like branding and marketing is something that I just, I love to do. I can general, tell. You know, um, if you never read the book Contagious, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Make sure you do that. But um, Contagious. I, okay, who's that by? It's by Jonah Berger. Okay. I just looked at it, looked at it last night. Okay. <clears throat> but it's a dope book. Um Everything I do, I just look at it from a perspective of marketing, you know, and um, how how to be able to look at a product or something that I have and present it to people in a way that they would want to buy, you know. And it's not like I'm forcing people to do nothing. I'm giving people quality product. I'm giving people good customer service. You know, it's a clean environment. You know, I'm looking out for my employees. I just I look at it in the, uh, a way like I'm not looking for handouts from people, you know, and I think sometimes people come into like being an entrepreneur and, and you want like almost like sympathy a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, like support me cause I'm black owned <clears throat> business type or whatever, even, you know, black owned, not black owned, mm -hmm. you know, just entrepreneur in general. People feel like you're supposed to have, like you're just supposed to get a cookie for trying, I guess. Like, I mean, yeah, kind of in a sense, mm -hmm. you know, um, but but I look at it like this, like when you get a business, it's like playing in the NBA. Mm -hmm. You know, you might sit on the bench, but you still in the NBA, you know. So like you gotta come with your A game, just period, you know. So when I do a business, I'm I'm trying to put my business like 
in the, in the world of all the bigger businesses, mm -hmm. whether that's Best Buy, Kroger, you know, Google, Coca Cola, Sprite, Grizz by Scotty, you know what I'm saying? Like that's how my mind thinks. So I don't want to shortchange people or or shortchange myself. You know, I want to get the quality all the way through, and I think that's that's like something that we have to have a mindset of as entrepreneurs. You know, F finding out what you don't know how to do. You know, looking at who's doing it well. You know, it's okay to it's okay to get started, and maybe you don't have everything from right. the start. You know, what I'm saying like when I started out, I was pulling up at people. Uh, at their crib, you know, going to Kroger, you know, meeting people wherever I could. I feel like I remember seeing you at events, a lot of events first, too. Yeah, I did, you know, but I always try to put, I always try to, like, create value in myself, you know, and that allowed people to put me in spaces where not only I could benefit, but they could, be, they could benefit, too, you know. And so that's, like, the, the thing in starting out, even if you don't have nothing, okay, that's cool. But do you have value in your name? You know, do people respect you? Do you have good relationships? You know, because that's what's going to take you to the next level. Everybody started at a low level. You know what I mean? But it's it's the intention. It's what you put into it. It's what elevates you. Because people are partnering with you if you're doing the right thing and you're right. doing it the right way. Right. Right. That Puma collab <laughs> was hard. And I also, I like the show you had at Vinyl. Candle Row, oh, yeah. Candle Row concert. Yeah, yeah, you had sure. people like Transley. Did you have like Trinidad James? Mm -hmm. Like you had a lot of, I would say, Atlanta staples, or people that really people that like yourself. Like they have their own platforms and they've made their own way in Atlanta too. So it's like, what made you put that together? Even from like the partners, like you had the campaign ATL, Butter ATL. Like what made you? Because you're about branding. So what right. made you put that all together like that? I was just thinking that. You know, it's it's always better if we can come together, you know. Everybody everybody trying to come up, you know. So instead of you doing your thing over here and you doing your thing over here, like, man, let's collaborate and do something big where everybody can be noticed, everybody can be recognized, everybody can be a part of this. And then key relationships build out of that. You know, I see a lot of, like, people who doing, whether it's interviews, other shows, and whatever, mm -hmm. you know, different business ventures out of the shows that we do. I, I watch these things, and it's dope. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm happy for what people are doing, but that's the that's the purpose of it, so we can collaborate, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in this space and take it further. <laughs> Pause it, Gio. He's for happy sure. for you. For sure. I would say, like, what was your experience like coming up as an as a underground artist in Atlanta? Like, what was that like? First, let me ask before I go into that, what was your – Favorite, I guess, most legendary show? Because I know you probably did a lot in Department Store everywhere. Man, that Department Store probably was my probably was my most legendary show, I feel like. You know. Remember um, who was all on it with you? I remember Big Gilt came out at the time. Um, Man, I can't. I, I just know that's on so pet. It was the first time they was doing a playlist party and Jay Wise was like, you know, you could only use the upstairs. And so I just basically, like, was hounding him about using both levels. I was like, bro, listen, I'm going to pack this shit out. We don't even know. Shout out to Jay Wise. He's still around. Yeah, yeah, that's my dog. And, um, man, we did it. You know, it was for Spaghetti Junction. So at the time, like, you know, I had spaghetti infused, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, stuff people could eat. You know, okay. I had regular spaghetti. It was just that like was a brand you had back then. Man, it was crazy. People mm. were painting out front when you came in. I had a party downstairs. Then you came upstairs. I was doing like interviews and then performing. And it was just the first time the department store was packed top and bottom, you know. And um, after that, people, you know, started like doing their thing there. A lot of artists, mm -hmm. a lot of bigger artists, started like booking it, mm. you know. So, yeah, that was probably like my biggest show. I feel like, or just the one I felt like was most impactful though that I remember. Is it anything that you can appreciate from coming up in like an underground scene or a scene like that? Like you can appreciate from doing back then to now? Cause you know, people be doing the little shows. I'm pretty sure by this time you had this show was packed crazy. You know, people start off doing like, Oh, it's only five people here, 10 people here mm -hmm. or whatever people go through in Atlanta when they come to shows. Have you taken anything from that and anything that you can appreciate today? Yeah. I mean, I've done shows where I, when I first started, you know, I would go to shows and I would do open mics. But I learned early on 
going to like Club Crucial, mm-hmm. shit like that. Like I learned early on that I needed to bring people, mm-hmm. you know. So mm-hmm. I would go to the open mic, and my whole point was to stand out. Mm-hmm. Only way I was gonna stand out was to have people in the crowd, mm-hmm. you know, with my shirts on. They knew my words to you know my songs, and um, I would come to the open mic with ten, twenty people. And and that that allowed me to get bigger opportunities. So since then, I always had the mindset of, you know, checking in, letting people know like, what I got going on, making sure I'm posting stuff, making sure people was aware, and like making sure I pulled up with people, you know. And I just took that. I went on the road with it, and I built my fan base in Atlanta doing that. You know? So anytime I have a show, it's it's been sold out like the last seven, eight shows in Atlanta. That's what's up. I'm happy for you. How, um, how has fatherhood been for you? Like with you being an entrepreneur and with you having like and with you having a music career. Um, it's been good. You know, it's it's a lot to balance sometimes, but it it definitely helps. It definitely helps you to stay grounded. You know, talking to your kids, um, checking on them, everything like it's dope. Yeah. I bet they so. I bet they love it. Like, oh, my daddy do this. My daddy your brother. My daddy. When they be telling their friends and stuff. I don't know what they tell them. You know, they don't really talk like that around me. You know, it's just it's just normal like stuff. You know, we we just play like truth or dare and shit like that. You That's know so what cute. I mean? but, yeah. So cute. Why did you Why did you name the project? I mean, it's kind of self explanatory. But why did you choose to name this one? Candler Road to Melrose. I always just wanted to take people. On the journey with me, I'm big about not not doing gimmick, mm-hmm. but like giving people real life. You know where I'm at, and I think it's it's just easier to like connect with because it's like you can see it for mm-hmm. real. This is what I'm doing. So from Keller Road to Melrose, like this is my journey, this is my travel. You know, this is where I went from having this store to having this store out here, and just back and forth. You know, traveling, you know, handling business. This like what life like for me right now when you listen to it, you know. So I think that's dope, you know, just to hear something that current that's in real time. Like you know, I ain't trying to do what nobody else doing. I'm just doing my own shit. I feel it. Is there anything else that you would like for us to know, or anything that you got coming up that only spill the tea can know? Um, what else do I got coming up? I got a video coming up from my deposits record. Okay. Off the project, uh, look out for that. Um, me and I am Sue probably gonna do a video, you know what I mean? To the record we got, you know, like I said, we got some big shit in the work. So you know, look out for that, and um, that's it right now. Yeah. Okay, we can't wait for that deposit. Cause I know in the song you were saying you basically you take deposit for everything. Like every time yeah. somebody hit your phone, it's I right, hit me with the deposit. Like. <laughs> Now that one of my favorite songs. Shout out to Tasha Couture. Oh, shout out to her. Yeah. I love her as a producer. Yeah, she dope. She did a couple records on the project. She did Go Twin and she did That LA one Kill. is for the club. Okay. We need that one in the club right okay. now. We need All that right. for the late. You right. gotta make a video to that too. Okay. All right, for sure. For sure. Yeah, she did Go Twin, she did LA Kill, and she did Deposit. Mm. And I feel like those are some of my favorites, and it's crazy that a woman was behind them, so it's like uh, she go hard. It is hard. Yeah. All right. Let everybody know one more time where they can find you online, where they can find grills. Yeah, man. Find me. Scotty ATL, S E L T T Y ATL. Grills by Scotty. Grills with a Z. Scotty with an S. Yeah, I'm in here, man. Grills by Scotty.com. Pull up, get a grill. You feel me? Hey, and it's your favorite cup of tea. Y'all make sure y'all check out that Candler Road and Melrose of Scotty ATL. Make sure y'all hit them up and get a grill. You say you on the east side, right, with I'm it? I'm on the east side. 1900 Candler Road. We open right now. I feel like you used to be up. on Peter Street doing grills. Was no? Nah, I, I, I might have been over there just pulling up on okay. somebody, though. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I, I always been uh, on Candler Road. I had a shop before that on Godby Road okay. know, with somebody. But, uh, yeah. Hey, Spill the TTV, and we out.